Still, she's not here. Okay, it'll work. Thank you. <gasps> Hi. Hi. How are you, Mrs. Thomas? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm well. You look fantastic. Thank you. You know, I got to get beautiful for you. I hear you, boo. Thank you. I, I don't know what was going on, but I had Phil help me. <laughs> so. Listen, it's, it's perfectly fine. I know all about technical difficulties. Yes. Me. Oh my gosh. So how you been? I have been good. I have been busy. Yes. I'm tired and trying to push <laughs> through. What's, what's the new job these days? So, um, I got a promotion in November. Oh. Um, I'm a senior creative designer for um, a real estate brokerage here in Maryland. And um, it's been great. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, more responsibility, more time trying to mm -hmm. find a work life balance. Yeah. Along with having a business, it can be a bit much. I but hear I'm working you. it out. Yes, but congratulations on that. I'm sure you Thank definitely you. deserve it because you put in that work. <laughs> Ooh, I've been working hard. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, you're welcome. Um, so thank you for agreeing to do this. Um, we've you. been trying to interview so many different um artists just to, you know, keep keep people motivated that are artists yeah. <laughs> to keep doing uh -huh. their thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is start off with an introduction. Okay. and then go into the questions they're not going to be like I, I was supposed to send you questions wasn't I <laughs> it, you forgot I forgot to you so. okay because you asked gonna, me and then I forgot so yeah it's fine we're gonna work it out it's pretty informal um you know nothing out of the extreme uh, this would be edited as well so like if you make mistakes or you know you left something out we can definitely add that in there great makes me yes. feel great okay <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go into the introduction and we'll go straight into it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Creative Habits Podcast. Today, we have such a special guest. Um, my dear friend, Ebony Thomas is here today. We're going to discuss a lot of things, um, but I'm just going to start off with an introduction and we'll get right into it. All right. So Miss Ebony Thomas um, has a beautiful brand. And her mission is to break beauty standards and let women know it's their beauty, their choice, and how they choose to wear their makeup as their business. We will help women feel confident and beautiful no matter where they go. No more, no more rules to beauty. And that's a quote directly from Ebony. So we're going to start there. Welcome to the show, Ebony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. And um, that quote is uh, a big deal to me because I hate that people are like, you have to wear your makeup like this or you have to wear your makeup like this. And there shouldn't be all of these rules and restrictions. You know, makeup is another form of art. It's a way to express yourself and have creative freedom. And um, I just feel like every woman should be able to do whatever they want to do with their body. Okay. Love it. So I just want to say right now to all of my listeners, I'm wearing the product right now. Um, can you share a little bit about what your brand is, what it's called and how it came about? Yes. So first of all, it looks beautiful and you thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, and my brand is called Amore Labs. Um, it's the Amore stands for I make my own rules. Oh. Um, yes. Um, and so 
how the brand came about. So a few years ago, I had started a cosmetic line and <laughs> it kind of fell through because I was working at a job that I hated and just it was just a terrible experience. And after that situation, I felt like a failure because I had launched this brand and, you know, I had so many great ideas and then my drive had just kind of went away. Um, and then um, when I met my now husband, um, sometime in our relationship, um, I call her my mother-in-law, my mother in love, his mom passed away and mm -hmm. it was really traumatic and hard for the both of us. And I took time away from makeup, you know, because I wanted to make sure that he was okay. Right. Um, but I think that during that time, I just completely took a step away from makeup mm -hmm. and he was just like, babe, are you going to get back into it? And I just wasn't feeling it. I tried mm -hmm. my best. I wasn't feeling it. And, um, you know, during the pandemic, I just feel like at a time where, where God just made the world sit still, um, that's when my vision came back to me mm -hmm. um, of what I wanted to do with my life um, and with my business. And so I was just so grateful to have that still time to um, just refocus and um, relaunch a new brand. And that's how More Labs was born. Um, and right now we start, we've started with liquid lipsticks. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it works best because, you know, right now people are still wearing masks and things like that. And so I thought that the matte, the matte lipsticks will work best for now. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are going to grow into other areas, um, lip gloss, lip liners, everything. So I'm excited. Fantastic. And there's something really um, profound that you just said when you were sharing your story about Emore Labs, which is that you had a moment to just pause for a second, you know, during the time that we currently are in, in the pandemic. Um, so how do you feel that um, you said, you mentioned that you ended up, you know, feeling like a failure, but how did you overcome that? You know, I know you had your husband encouraging you, but what made you really push yourself this time to really, you know, try again? Um, to be honest, it was my faith. I'm just going to yeah. be honest. Um, the pandemic was hard for everybody, but it was, it was really hard for me too. Mm -hmm. And, um, me building a closer relationship with God allowed me to be able to see my vision um, and just overcome some things. Yeah. And um, my biggest thing was like, I was embarrassed. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you put a business out there and the world sees it and then it just disappears. And it's just kind of like, I didn't want to try again because I was embarrassed, but I had to get over number one, fear is the main thing. <laughs> okay. I had to get over my fear of number one, failing, but my fear of being concerned about what other people would think about me, um, and I really prayed hard about it. And, you know, I had a friend who encouraged me to just push forward. My family encouraged me, my husband encouraged me, but girl it was the Lord, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It's, it's yeah. not easy. And, and I know a lot of us as artists don't really talk about this, but we, we suffer from imposter syndrome yes. where sometimes we feel like, okay, just because something failed, I'm not sure if I can pick myself up again and, you know, try this again. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we have the versatility as artists to do that. You know, it's, it's one of our gifts to be able to have a sense of creativity that can push us through uh, without us even knowing. <laughs> so. Yeah. And it comes with, it comes with the territory, like, mm just being able to pivot and change course. Right. And my biggest thing was like, who, who told me to launch a business in the middle of a <laughs> pandemic? You know what I mean? Like, right. where did, where did this vision come from? But I've always had it. Mm -hmm. um, and it all, would always come back up over the years, but I kept pushing it aside because I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I was just trying to figure out how I could still be involved with beauty. Right and still enjoy it and so for me it was just like when I lose the joy of doing makeup or doing something it's just like okay now we need to pivot figure out what's next and so here we are right so what came first was it the initial design for the brand or like you picking out the colors so what what came first so it was the initial design for the brand and let me tell you something as an artist I am my toughest critic <laughs> 
okay? Trying to figure out a name, like, it's easy to say, okay, I'm not ready to launch because the name isn't finalized. I still need some time to think about it. And so when it came to the name, like, yes, I worked hard on it. And mm-hmm. I went through like this roster <laughs> of names, but I got to a point where it was like, we're picking a name today. And, and we're, we're going to stick forward. with it. Correct. <laughs> and move like, forward. it was no more. Let me get your opinion. Let me do this. Let me do it. No, because I can be very indecisive Mm -hmm. and that can get in the way of me, you know, completing my goal. And so I was just like, no, choose a name today. And then we went into the colors. Yes. Us Pisces do definitely suffer from indecisiveness. It's it's (laughs) crazy. I'll just be like, my sister gets so irritated with me and I'm like, let me just make a decision and keep moving. Right. I love that. So I'm wondering, because a lot of the times when we have conversations with artists, we talk about, you know, the importance of like the things that have helped them prior to them starting a business or starting their goals. So what can you take away from your experience in an art school, as far as you coming up with your brand? Um, so with going to art school, number one, you gotta have a tough skin, okay? Mm-hmm. Because your work is critiqued on a daily basis. Like you just have to know how to be able to accept constructive criticism and not even constructive criticism, sometimes just criticism alone. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one thing. And then um, also when I went to MICA, I actually, my senior thesis project was um, Knockout Cosmetics. I did a beauty brand. And so for me, it was just kind of like the stepping stone for me to get to where I am now. Mm. Um, And I literally did that whole senior thesis from scratch to making the lipsticks in my kitchen, you know, designing my um, like installation, um, setting up all the lipstick boxes and everything. Like it was, it was a very big deal for me. And that let me know that I could do it like as, a career as a business in real life, if I could do it for my project. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's really amazing. Um, and so right now, like, do you have, um, you know, maybe a factory for your company or do you actually still do things from home or it's a mix of two things simultaneously? We don't have, um, I am not making these in my kitchen. Okay. (laughs) Because I don't (laughs) have the time to make them anymore. Um, so we do have an, a vendor, an outside right. vendor that we use to produce our products. Um, and it just makes it easier for me. You know, I can choose the colors I want. I can test out the consistency to make sure that it's what I need. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just a perfect fit. But back then, I was unaware that, you know, that was that available existed. to me. Right. Correct. Mm-hmm. I was completely unaware that that was available to me. And like, Yes, I would do my research on Google, but there weren't as many, um, how can I say this, vendors, factories, Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't a lot of information about how to start a cosmetic brand um, like there is now. And so, you know, I'm just grateful that I had to go through all of those things to get me to this moment. Yeah. Yeah. So the quote that you say that, you know, you want women to know that it's your beauty, it's your choice, and it's, you know, your business, whatever you want to choose to with makeup. I love that because I do feel like there's a lot of criticism when people play with makeup, you know, whether it's heavy or whether it's pretty light, there's always comments, you know, surrounding what women do, what, what women choose to do with their bodies. Um, so I'm really loving what Amore Labs like stands for and you know what you're doing to continue enhancing or allowing women to express themselves as freely as they want to be. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I just, I think also with my brand, it came with me like finding my voice as an adult hmm. um, and again, making decisions for myself and figuring out what works best for me. And I just want to empower women to do that to do the same thing and yes my brand is about beauty but it's also about you know female empowerment and just 
knowing you can do whatever works best for you just because your family says this or your friend is saying this doesn't mean you have to do that everybody's path and everybody's journey is different and I want them to embrace that absolutely so um I know that you are a 360 (laughs) creative um so I wanted to know what your day job was like and how um that influences you to continue your own personal business so my day job is busy okay (laughs) Um, I am working on a ridiculous amount of projects um, a day. Um, I'm working on social media graphics, flyers. I'm designing postcards, um, business cards. I mean, it's I work on a lot of print pieces, um, but we also work on animations too. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and so it's really... <sighs> it really reminded me how much I love graphic design because I always wanted to find a way to merge graphic design and beauty. And so with me having my brand, it's allowed me to do that. Like, you know, the feminine girly graphics that I want to do, I can't do that at my corporate work. Right. (laughs) Um, And so like when I'm designing for my business, it's exciting and it's fun to me because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And I know the girls are going to love it. Right. So, um, I don't know. It's a different level um, of passion there when you, number one, are working for yourself um, and you're just doing something that you enjoy. Yes. Because let's talk about your packaging, honey. <laughs> it is amazing. Like I love, you know, the postcard that was in there with the lovely greeting, you know, thanking your customers, the packaging, like everything was just so fun and, you know, so beautifully curated. Everything was right up through. You have won my heart. Okay. (laughs) Because I was so, um, again, I am my toughest critic. And Mm -hmm. so it's just like, I want my customers to have a beautiful experience right when they open my packaging and I, you know so I really appreciate you um saying that and even over time like I want to evolve it and enhance it and make it even better right. but um I just wanted it to be super clean super fun um and just super feminine yeah and so um I, it's it's nice to hear that that's what I provide that, mm-hmm. definitely for- very, very, very much so. <laughs> so um, we, we did talk about your corporate job, but I wanted to know what exactly is your title? Um, for a lot of listeners, I know that some of the challenges that we may have as creatives or artists is that we don't know, you know, what's available to us or what kind of titles a creative can end up having. So I know that you have a unique position and I would love to, for you to share kind of what you do and, you know, what kind of field you would probably study to get there. Okay. Great. Um, so <laughs> I am a senior creative designer. Um, and that pretty much means like I have, there are two, excuse me, three <laughs> designer, other junior designers in my department. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, you know, we collaborate on work, but like I'm, I'm going through proofing their work to make sure things are aligned properly. Um, that there are no spelling errors, grammar, things like that. I'm giving them feedback on their work where I'm able to mentor them, you know, Mm -hmm. if they need assistance with things. And that's the area as a junior designer that I feel like I wasn't able to do, which was mentor other designers. And now in my role, I can help um, just cultivate their design skills and help them work through things. We have brainstorming sessions all the time where we're developing campaigns um, for each month. Um, What else do I do? Like I said, I do a lot of print work. Um, So again, postcards, flyers, business cards. Um, I, we have about, I think 300 plus agents. Oh, wow. Real estate agents. Yes, it is. (laughs) Yes, it is. And they have um, very specific requests of what they like. Um, and let's see, what else do we do? Um, oh, so, so pause when you're saying they have very specific things that you like, do you also have to take that in consideration, but maintain the brand of the company? Yes, I do. (laughs) So with that, you know, it comes with a little, so what I've learned is you have to be mindful of your tone. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And you have to be mindful of what you're saying and just how you say it. Right. Um, so we always want to make the agents happy and um, we don't want to tell them no, like, no, we can't do something. Um, so majority of the time it's me taking whatever request they put in, even if it's a completely off brand and figuring out how can I make this on brand. Right. Um, and that happens I mean, honestly, on a regular basis, <laughs> the territory. Um, and so it's just, Indigo, it's just a lot <laughs> that um, I do in my department. And in terms of, you know, what you would need to do to get there. Um, so I graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in graphic design. Um, so that means that I was there for four years. Um, and so you just have to have college experience as well as just experience in the field. So whether that be an internship, um, trying to, trying to break into graphic design when you're outside of school is hard. I think that trying to break into any career out immediately outside of school is is difficult difficult. (laughs) because they want you to have experience, Mm -hmm. but no one is willing to give you a chance for you to have experience. Right. And so the company that I'm at now, um, I had worked for, I was uh, not freelancing, but I was temping for a couple of different, like I got temped for, I think, Pandora, Under Armour. Like I got temped for a couple of people in Baltimore. Mm. And um, then I got this position as a temp. And after two, uh, after about a month and a half, they made me full time. Okay. Um, and I've been there. It'll be, I think, five years in. In June, I've been there. That's amazing. Now. That's amazing. So now you you must have to pass the torch <laughs> for those that are coming up under you, because I feel like even with your company, at some point you may need, you know, internships because you're now starting another business or you're expanding. So um, that's one of the things that um, my partner and I have been talking about whenever we start, you know, our actual business, just having opportunities for other artists to be able, you know, to get to, to, to get a start. Cause it's really challenging in the arts to, to yeah. really start in your career or your field. It takes a, a bit of time. I completely agree. And, you know, I, I'm excited to be able to one day expand my business. And I always think about like, having my beautiful warehouse where I have Mm -hmm. employees or who are happy to be there. Um, And I just, I don't know. I just feel like one thing that you learn in corporate America is how you want to treat your employees when you have a business. That's what I hear you. Mm -hmm. You just learn like, like, for example, um, women have their monthly Mm -hmm. every month. Mm-hmm. And there are some people who feel like they're being dramatic. Nothing is wrong with you. But I want to be able to give my employees that time that they need off, you know, while yeah. they're going through this and that. Like, it's stuff like that. You know, it makes you think about, you know, how you see things. And so I'm excited to one day be able to offer those services to my employees. When that's, I have that's very generous. And I do believe that I, I can't believe that we're in 2022 and we don't have opportunities like that for women because we go through a lot. (laughs) It's not easy to have to, you know, go through that process or that period of time and still have to act like nothing is happening when, you know, we just need some time. Apparently there's a couple of European countries that already do that where you you can take time off to, to Mm -hmm. really rest when you're not feeling well. (laughs) To be honest, it's important. I mean, um, I think we have all tough moments when we have cramps, we're not mm-hmm. feeling our best and just, you know, mental health is important too. Yeah. And so I want mm-hmm. to be able to allow for them to have that time when they need it. So these are things that I think about, you know, for my future. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I mean, and we've all learned that we can get a job done remotely. <laughs> it's not like we can't. <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah, so yes, this can. in-person stuff should be optional because really we, we, we've learned that we, we could do stuff at home. (laughs) Yes. In every field. Um, so 
what made you want to pursue a career in the arts? I know you've been doing this since high school or just taking an interest in creativity. So can you take us into like your background and how arts, you know, became your love? Yeah, so I love when I get asked this question because it really comes from my childhood. Like when I was younger, I wanted to paint and draw all the time, even if I was terrible at it. It made me happy. You know, I just wanted to do it all the time. My parents would buy me canvases for me to paint. Um, it would The kids would be playing outside. I don't want to do that. I want to draw on my wall. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't want to do that. And so um, I really started to, like, I've always drawn, like, cartoon characters and things like that when I was younger. And then when I got to high school, um, it opened my eyes that, you know, being an artist full time is a possibility. Like, mm. I can't imagine not doing art. Like, I don't know what my other career would be, to be honest, because this is something that brings me joy. I don't know right. what I'm doing. Right. Um, and so in high school, like, I would take painting classes and I would be painting for hours. I don't even want to go to my other classes for what <laughs> I did. But, <laughs> you know, I would just prefer to sit there and paint all day. Um, and my art teachers introduced me to, you know, they let me know the colleges that were available to me um, mm -hmm. and the careers that were available to me. Like, for example, I think my senior, no, junior year of high school, I took a some sort of graphic design class. It was basic of basic classes. It was in Photoshop. OK, like it wasn't anything crazy. Um, and it was like the old school Mac computers when they. <laughs> Yeah. like the different colors mm -hmm. um and I had made this green like you had to make a portrait of yourself in different colors and it it was terrible it was really <laughs> terrible okay but um for me that was the start of me thinking about being a graphic designer because right. I just wanted to do something that number one would make me money okay because I feel like a graphic designer is always needed and mm -hmm. Every always mm -hmm. it th there will always need to be someone to make your marketing pieces your social graphics your animations to cut videos like I feel like that career field will always be lucrative even though when I graduated college people told me I, were, I wasn't going to be able to find a job oh, yeah and but look I at am. you now <laughs> okay right here I am so mm -hmm. yeah it's just I've always loved it from childhood and high school opened my eyes up to what was possible. Um, and it's funny that you say that because I didn't foresee myself in this role. Hmm. I didn't foresee myself in this role. So in what way did you feel like you weren't, um, I don't know, qualified or you didn't feel like you could see yourself there because you weren't experienced enough? Like what, what made you think that? all of the above. <laughs> um, when I was fresh out of college and I was applying to jobs, I went to want to interview for a design agency here in Baltimore. And um, number one, it was an all male design agency. Mm. Wasn't really feeling that, but it was. Um, and I went on the interview and I did a design test, but it didn't go too well. And they never called me back. And I always think back to that moment because for a long time, I was discouraged yeah. about moving forward. I don't know. Maybe it was because of where I was in my life at the time, but um, I just never felt where I just, even when I went to Cor Corcoran, I was just like, how did I pass? Like, <laughs> you know, I ask myself that all the time. Like, how did I get, you know, how did I get to where I am now? Because yes. uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't feel worthy also mm -hmm. because like, you know, our schools to me are predominantly white. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot of people who go there whose families have money and all of these right. things. And when I attended art school, that wasn't me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I didn't, my parents had two other kids at home. Right. Um, and every week I needed like supplies or like I needed my programs. It was very expensive. And like all the kids seemed to know how to work all of the Adobe programs before they got to 
their freshman year of college I Mm -hmm. knew absolutely nothing Mm -hmm. and so it was just scary for me because I was just like do I really deserve to be here really honestly that is crazy because I was feeling the same way and you know I started off as a photojournalist major Mm -hmm. but I had zero experience in the dark room and the lack of patience that people were having with me for the fact that I did not know how to do this I was just like you know what at least I know how to draw and I know how to paint so let me just switch to fine art and see where that will take me but the the conversation surrounding intimidation and fear like that is real. And, you know, it's another form of imposter syndrome because I feel like that mixed with a a lack of resources or financial, Mm -hmm. you know, backing to get, you know, the supplies that you want, or you feel like you need for that program or whatever, it it becomes a little bit stressful and challenging. (laughs) Like you're not sure. It was hard. I'm not, I'm not Mm going to lie. It was hard. And I, I wasn't sharing with my parents all that I was dealing with yeah but also I wasn't clear myself right with all that I was dealing with I was just going with the you know I would just yeah. go with, through the motions of like okay well I need to figure this out um I don't know how to use this program let me see if I can ask a friend or something like that like there were a couple different um women in my classes who would assist me and I really appreciated that because I had no clue um what I was doing and sometimes to this day I still feel like I have no clue of what I'm doing but I've had to learn that I worked hard to get here I earned the the seat was made for me okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) like I put in the work to get here um and I just have to remind myself that all the time to be honest Mm -hmm. and I, I I love that because just with your journey in general I'm sure in the position or role that you have, you're very patient, you know, with the people that you're overseeing based off of your own personal experience. Like you understand <laughs> that sometimes you're not going to know everything and we can work together. So that's, that's super dope. And that's so funny that you said that because we have two new designers in our department and, you know, the same thing that people above me used to say to me, I say to them, mm-hmm. which is grant yourself some grace mistakes happen it's okay you just learn from them and you know you work on a plan so that you don't make the same mistake again and um when you leave work leave work at work and for Mm -hmm. me that's the biggest thing is I I think important yes we get so engulfed in what we're doing oh I have to finish this or this person's going to be upset and like you can cause yourself stress and anxiety and then you're worrying about work while you're supposed to be at home mm-hmm. resting and so now it's time for you to go back to work and you're not well resting you know what mm-hmm. I mean like it's a constant um cycle so I'm just te- teaching them things that people have taught me and mm-hmm. I am very patient and calm I tell them ask me questions don't feel scared to ask me questions I don't if you feel like you're getting on my nerves you're not right I want you to feel comfortable to ask me questions because I used to hate when I work somewhere and I would ask a question because I didn't understand and they make you feel so small right because you want to ask a simple question and it's just like I don't want to treat um, my co-workers my employees or anyone around me like that I don't want people to feel like that right you, and you got to keep that energy vibes going positive because the work even looks better yeah. <laughs> the performance is better when you respect your the people that you work with okay. um yeah so I wanted to talk about like how you were discussing your experiences with the Corcoran or like not knowing how to do things into your work life mm-hmm. but a lot of the times I um you know we find that we not all of us know what we're doing <laughs> we're mm-hmm. basically you know winging it with the tools that we have but I wanted to ask a question because you're in the field of graphic design mm-hmm. um does it seem like you have to learn new software or new technology because a lot of things change over the years? How do you apply that to, you know, new software or new Photoshop <laughs> things? Or even you're mentioning animation. Is that, was that something that was new to you? These are great questions. So let's start with the animation portion. <laughs> so I learned animation when I was in college, but it was in Flash. Mm-hmm. okay different so, yeah yes completely different 
when I tell you that flash was the stress of my life, like <laughs> I hated that course because again, I was learning something that I knew absolutely nothing about. It was very, very difficult for me right. to understand. Was I able to complete my project? Yes, but I hated the program. And so when I came to this job and I realized that, you know, animations are thing still um I had co-workers who helped me okay. in terms of um they showed me how to use After Effects and okay. I think I had used After Effects one once or twice before in school but nothing like intricate but like I created an entire um game that kind of like it's like Pac-Man mm. in After Effects it was just you know it's just I, I'm proud of where I've come from in terms of like not knowing how to use the program not feeling comfortable in the program and now feeling fully comfortable in the program right and um yeah sometimes you have to take courses like if I don't know how to do something that I want to do in a program I'm on YouTube Mm -hmm. um I'm on what is that program Linda it's it's called lynda.com where it shows you videos Mm -hmm. of how to do stuff um I might use that um you asked me another question before this. Before. Uh, we discussed your current work life situation with animation. And I was just saying, like, how do you also, um, how are you able to kind of figure out new technology or software yeah. as the years change and, and technology changes? Thank you. So I have a co worker slash friend who is very into virtual reality. Um, because that's where the world that's is where going. we're going yeah <laughs> obviously mm-hmm. I mean she is very much into it and she has um slowly gotten me into certain things like for example learning how to create um a Facebook or Instagram filter mm-hmm. and Sparks AR it was a headache for me at the beginning but once I got into the program and I was able to create I was like okay I got the hang of it But for me, I feel like sometimes when you don't use a tool or a program as often, um, you kind of have to relearn how to do it each time you use it if a a lot of time has gone past. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that can be annoying (laughs) to have to, you know, constantly be relearning the same program. But again, it's just trying to keep up with, um, I guess, what's going on in the industry to see where we're going. But it's a hundred percent virtual reality and you know digital so it's just making sure that you are knowledgeable on those programs so what does that look like when you're trying to study new information do you have to like take notes for yourself or you just kind of memorize it as you go so me like when I'm learning how to do something in a program I'm literally watching the YouTube video and I have the program open Mm -hmm. and just working while they yes working while they do it so I'll watch it first and then I will do what I need to do on my end but I can be very impatient like sometimes they take forever this is not what I need right I I need you to move a little quicker so I didn't skip 30 seconds and I passed what I needed. So now I got to go back and start again. Mm -hmm. You should try TikTok (laughs) because sometimes you like type the one thing you can pull it up. Let me tell you something. TikTok <laughs> is literally a rabbit hole. Like mm-hmm. I will be on there for a second. Next thing you know, it's dark. How long hey, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah. Um. So talk, speaking of like the virtual reality and the, the, you know, the meta universe kind of shifting the way that we're going to look at things. Do you believe that um, a lot of the work that you do is probably going to transfer into that space? I don't know if the work that I do is going to transfer into that space. Um, yeah, I don't know if the work that I do, like, especially mm-hmm. not in my, my corporate job, I don't think it's going to transfer into that space, but I haven't even been like into the metaverse. Yet. Right. To know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone you know, like, is still. Yeah, yeah. To know like what's going on. Like I, my coworkers told me like little things and I've seen like small things on social media, mm-hmm. but I haven't actually like been in it to see how it 
operate and right. how it's moving to really understand like what's really going on right this is cre- it's still very creepy to me like it I'm is. like how is it gonna work but I know three or four years to now things that become creepy become our normal so <laughs> we'll see because how it pans we, out. we become desensitized to stuff I mean right. it's bad, but that's just the truth of how it is yeah so we just have a few more questions and I wanted to know like because you have such a huge role how do you um manage your work life and um, you know, I mean, well, your work and life balance, how do you balance the two? I have, how do you find time to spend time, you know, with your loved one at home and kind know, of separate your, your work life? You know, I'm going to be honest. It's difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, I, um, we had a, uh, big meeting that we have every year at my corporate job in January, by the end of January. Mm -hmm. And it requires a lot. And so I was doing a lot of overtime. It was just, it was overwhelming for me. Um, And so I was just like, this is not what I want my everyday life to look like. Like I can't function like this every day. Right. Um, And so now that we're past that time, um, you know, I go to work, do what I need to do, but at five o'clock, I'm when I'm out. off, I'm leaving. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm shutting the computer. Mm-hmm. I'm leaving to go home. I'm not thinking about work or I'm trying my best. Not to, if I feel myself starting to think about work, I need to change the thought. Like I'm trying mm-hmm. to figure out how to not do that. Um, and in terms of spending time with my loved one, um, I, you know, we make time for one another, set dates and things like that, Um, Mm -hmm. find fun things to do. Um, It's it's just hard. Um, And even with my business, when I get home from work, I I have to set time aside to do that. The one thing that's been the hardest for me with my business right now is social media. Oh, yeah. Okay. And when I say that, I mean, like, trying to learn to like I know how to batch create but it's taking the time to batch to actually do it yeah correct and so um I haven't posted in like a week or so because I've just been so tired and just been trying to rest and so I need to batch create so that I can start planning not start planning but plan for the colors that I'm going to like we have new colors that are going to be launching probably my birthday. Oh, exciting. Yes. Make it happen. Um, so I, I do want to talk more about your business because that's what we're basically here for. Mm -hmm. Um, but like you said, you haven't found time really to focus on your passion. However, you have everything, you know, you have the brand, you have it set up, you know, on Instagram, you have all this great stuff. Your website looks fantastic. But where do you see Imar Labs going um, between now and five years from now? How does that look like? What do you envision for yourself? I envision Imar Labs being a full service beauty brand, having every beauty product you could ever imagine. Um, I want to have my own chemist creating the products for me. Um, I want us to have our own warehouse where we can, you know, house our products, create our products, but also where we can like take, I want to have a studio where we can Mm -hmm. take our photos and things like that. I want to have a photographer on staff. Like I just have, I see it. Like literally you see me staring into space. Like I see the vision and I've had this vision for a little while, um, and I know we're going to get there, but I just, I'm excited. I know. Cause I can even see you having like a beauty bar station where it's like yes. people come to get their makeup done. Yes. Like I yes. also meant, I did not mention this um, in your introduction, but a lot of people don't know that you're also a makeup artist and that you also do, you know, <laughs> that on, on the side. So just having like everything come full circle, I'm sure it'll be such a joy to actually see and, met, you know, everything that you've manifested come into place. I'm, I'm just so excited to, mm. um, to build my brand. And I, I literally don't know what I'm doing. You know, we talked about that. <laughs> like I'm the Lord is guiding my footsteps. That's all I right. have to say. 
Um, but I do have the vision that he laid on my heart and I'm excited to see it to come to fruition. Absolutely. So So we just do have a few questions. Um, and I'm so excited. We're still talking about your business, but what did you feel like when you've had your first sale or your first few sales? Cause I'm sure in the beginning, you probably sold out because people were so excited that you were coming back. So when I had my first sale, I was grateful. Um, I think my first sale before. (laughs) Before I even launched the website, I think my first sale was my cousin because she had to work. So she wasn't going to be able to purchase like when it was available. Mm -hmm. But I just felt so grateful and appreciative because she wholeheartedly has pushed me and supports my business. And like, you know, I'm just grateful to have family members who do that. Um, And when I did sell out of I think I had like two melanin lipsticks left. Like that was a big deal to me because I sold out of my, you know, f- first batch wow. of um, lipsticks. And so it's just showing me that I can do it pretty much. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's, it's me reassuring myself, like, you know, you can do this. You have the gift that the Lord gave you to do this and you're going to do it. So Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Love it. So um, while we're concluding the interview, we like to play a game with our listeners. Um, So it's called this or that. And I'm just going to ask you a few questions and you're going to pick one, but then tell me why you chose it. Okay. Okay. So the first one is pancake or waffles. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Pancakes. Mm -hmm. And I chose pancakes. I love pancakes. I don't know. Yeah. I like I love I hot pancakes or like mm-hmm. buttermilk pancakes and the reason I'm talking about food like this is because I'm hungry so, no, shame. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong question to ask at the moment <laughs> yes yeah, so I'm like mm, I'm dreaming of that pancake now yeah and um yeah I love pancakes too but I think I would go with a nice Belgian waffle waffle you know, mm-hmm. a, a nice little waffle I love waffles the fluffiness the juiciness of like you know ugh, but Pancakes, I would see that too. <laughs> Have you tried the dessert waffles? They're like the mini ones that people put ice cream on top of. Oh my God, I have yet to try that, but that sounds oh like God. a joy. <laughs> it's so good. It's uh, oh, very addictive. Oh yeah. So we'll talk about that off air about where I can get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I know that you also are a great painter, um, hence the paintings behind you. Um, so yeah, she, she doesn't think that she's a great painter, but she is, <laughs> but, um, I wanted to know, like, if you were to go to any art show, would it be Frida Kahlo's or would it be Pablo Picasso? I'm thinking Frida Kahlo's and I'm saying that because of the color mm-hmm. in her paintings, the texture in her paintings, um, and just, I guess, the meaning. Okay, very too. nice. All right, so you have been hired by Rihanna and Juvia's Place to put out a makeup line with them. So like a pretty much a partnership. Uh-huh. And unfortunately, they were all Posted on the same day so you would have to pick one which one um, would it be <laughs> I mean <laughs> this is really an easy one you know yeah the queen Rihanna is my girl okay mm-hmm. like I am just so amazed at the mogul of a woman that she mm-hmm. is and just to be able to be a part of whatever she's working on would be a blessing to be uh, at the age as well she's not yes. you know she's just a few years older than us it's killing amazing. the game and yes. is a billionaire now <laughs> yes it is so amazing to me and I'm just so right. happy for her um don't get me wrong I do love Juvia's place let's be clear because those palettes are everything yeah. yes <laughs> um but Rihanna takes the cake all right cool so um if you had a choice would you launch your business only in Baltimore or they had asked you in Europe to house multiple 
warehouses of your store, not warehouses, but stores, like storefronts Mm -hmm. in either just Baltimore or Europe, all over Europe. And you said storefronts? Storefronts. So you can have one in your hometown of Baltimore (laughs) or or Maryland, Uh or you could just choose Europe, but in all places in Europe. So every single country, except for, so you, it wouldn't be in the United States of Rears in Europe, but instead of having one storefront, you would have several. So I'm going to say Europe, and I'm going to say that because sometimes we can be too comfortable in our safe space Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and so Europe would be completely out of my comfort zone and would push me to grow as a business owner and just to grow my business in general um and and so I would choose Europe yeah very smart and strategic because also I didn't say that you couldn't have things online (laughs) you could still do online but your stores are here so yeah, that's yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So Ebony, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, thank you so much for, you know, being a part of the podcast. I'm so proud of you because, you know, we were still quote unquote kids <laughs> when we started and we oh, met, we were. Yeah. you know, and uh, look at where we are now. It's, it's been so amazing to hear your journey and to hear where you're going. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you. I, am I really an adult? Am I really right, an adult? Right, girl. Like, we almost, I, sometimes I'm like, I'm almost 40. <laughs> like, yes, what that happen? Like, but sometimes I be feeling like a child. And I'm like, yes. dang, girl, no, you really an adult with a mm-hmm. business, a career. And hello, business. hello. Okay. All, all of them. It's, it's, it's shocking. Crazy. Sometimes I, I'm like waking up and there's like a foot, a baby foot in my face. And I'm like, when did oh, yeah, I make that? Oh, yeah, that So I'm that like, all right. Me. Yes. So I don't want to take too much of your time, but before we leave, can you please share all of your social media handles and your website so the ladies can know how to support you? Yes. Um, ladies, you can shop our liquid matte lipsticks online at amorelabs.com. And that's I M M O R labs with an S at the end.com plural. Um, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Amore Labs. Um, and we can't wait for you to buy your yes. new favorite lipstick. Like, yes. we're here for you. We love it. Yep. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you, Indigo. Yeah. So that will be the end. Um, yeah. And I'll let you know, like, once we finish uh phil does all the editing so he'll probably mm-hmm. just post it but we'll tag you um do you want us to tag you more labs or do you want us to tag both your your personal you and can your tag both. Yeah, okay. you can tag both okay i had a question yes. so okay when you asked me the question about my corporate job i was a little flustered only because Don't... like i didn't know what to say about them so can we ask that question again Sure. Okay. Let me see. I can't remember what I what asked. What did I say? I, I think you would, it was a question about what I do. Oh, well, and, like what's your position? Yes. Okay. So do you want to reword that? And then I'll make a note for us to take it out and put it back in. Yeah. Let's, let's, cause I'm trying to figure out how I want to say, let's see. Cause I, okay. So the, just the title, right? So I can. Yeah. Like what's my, what is my position and what do I do there? Okay. And what do you do? All right, so we'll cut that out and we'll put it back in. Okay, let's try it again. I'm going to try one more time. Hopefully I got my ducks in a row this time. No, girl, you're fine. All right, so I'm going to ask now because we have five minutes before Zoom kicks us out. (laughs) Okay, Okay, perfect. All right, so Ebony, what is your position, um, the title of what you do for your day job? And, um, you know, what what, what is that role like? Yeah, so um, I am a senior creative designer um at a real estate brokerage here in Maryland um and on my day-to-day I'm checking my projects managing my emails um I'm having meetings with my boss the chief marketing officer um I am proofing some of the other designers work um we have brainstorming sessions all the time um I'm designing print pieces and digital pieces. So I could be doing a flyer, a postcard, a business card, a brochure, a banner, a billboard, literally anything. Um, For digital, we do social graphics, 
and we also do animations and um you know we develop campaigns each month for the agents so we have about 300 plus agents that we've designed for but we also designed for um the brokerage as a whole like mm. their brand standard assets and things like that so I'm pretty busy <laughs> yeah love it all right do you think that was okay yeah, do you think that was okay? Yeah, no, I thought it was great. I thought the one before was great too. So okay, we so have listen, to <laughs> whichever one you think sounds best, because remember I said I am my toughest critic. Yes. So yeah, no, we'll we'll listen. And if I feel like we can do that one over, we'll do it. But I felt like all the questions you asked pretty like straightforward, okay, which perfect. was great. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So I don't want to take up too much of your time because it is Saturday. <laughs> so Thank you so much. It was so good to see you. You look gorgeous as usual. Um, have a great weekend. Have a great day. <laughs> Let me just say this before I go. Thank you for having me. Yes. I love you. Oh, I love it's you good too. Good to see you. Yes. You're an amazing mom. You're doing a Thank great you. job. And um, I'm just so grateful that you asked me to be a part. So oh, I'm so happy. And you know what? I was so bummed that we couldn't come to your wedding. We have been exposed to so many people around that time. It was awful. And we're like, you no, know what? If we go, <laughs> we go, we go make some people sick up in there. <laughs> no, and I, and listen, I understand. I completely appreciate that. It was, girl, it was a tough time. We pushed through. Okay. And you made it. Yes. We're here, prayerfully, COVID will kind of pass a little bit. So and we I hope. Enjoy. Fingers crossed. Enjoy outside. But, you know, I appreciate you saying that. I love you. Yes, I love They're you too, sis. There. Yeah, I know that you would have made it if you could. So yes. Okay. All righty. Have a good night. Okay. You too. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye.